you were saying something about um people that just wake up and they like on autopilot. Like I'm a firm yeah, believer. Absolutely. I'm a firm believer that you can exist two ways on the planet Earth. You can yeah. just be a regular human being that is like an animal. It's like the statue of the Sphinx in Egypt. Basically, that statue has the body of an animal, but the head of a man. And it signifies we have an animal nature, but we are intellectual beings. But I'm a firm yeah. believer that you can live your life just existing in your animal nature and never tap in to your mental to your mental powers and your spiritual powers and you just be a regular human being you understand what i'm saying some people exist like that and some people know and understand that there is something to is something mystic about the human spirit and something yes. mystic about the human mind that we must tap into absolutely we definitely are mystical creatures and the thing is we've just been tainted by so many different things in society and through experiences in life you know so people have lost sight of what we're supposed to be doing and a lot of people not even have lost sight they don't even know that this stuff exists because this is not what they're exposed to this is one thing i had a conversation with someone and i had to let them know they don't even understand why i don't listen to rap music right now do you understand that their songs like i'll put on pandora i have to pick my station like i will only listen to certain types of music because that's a vibration that is an energy frequency and i don't know if people even notice like okay if you get your heart broken you're sad your man cheat on you this and that you put on mary you put on keisha cole child you are not feeling any better you are feeling worse because you're now resonating with a song that is keeping you in the vibration that you already were in since you understand what I'm saying? So you need upliftment. You need some India I read. You need someone to remind you who you are. You need something different. That's a vibration that'll get you thinking about other things, feeling good about yourself. You know, there's a lot of things that we're exposed to. It's the music that we listen to, the stuff we watch on TV, our family, the way that we've been raised. You understand it all affects how we operate every day on a daily basis. I am thankful for regular stuff. That's what gets me into a power mood because I appreciate the elements like I was talking about before. I wake up, I'm thankful for the sun. Now you'll catch me out of nowhere like these people just walking around and then the sun starts shining. I will stop at my tracks, turn around and face the sun, close my eyes and let it just beam on my, it's activating my chakras. Let it beam on my face and my, my, my uh, chest and stuff like that. People look at me like I'm crazy. What do you think I care? I was talking about scripted. Now, some people are a little more, they really still care about what people think. You understand what I'm saying? They don't want to tap in to the elements like walking barefoot, and, you know, because that keeps you grounded. That works on the root shock and stuff like that. And, you know, some people really, you know, just want to write down stuff and script and that keeps them powerful. And that's how they're able to manifest the life that they want because they write it down. Now, me, myself, I am super connected to the natural elements so i could take a trip to the ocean best best place a person can ever take me like fyi whoever pays attention to this interview my favorite place in the world to go to is the ocean okay someone could to try offer to take me on a six seven hundred dollar date and i would rather go to the ocean i'm sitting here telling because there's so much people don't even realize how much power comes off of that ocean they don't even realize what's in front of them you understand what i'm saying go there appreciate the ocean stuff like that i charge my crystals there you can put your crystals and rinse it inside of um ocean water and it charges your crystals you know what's deep about the ocean the yeah. tides of the ocean of course is controlled by the light shining off the moon the moon's gravitational pull yes basically controls the tides because the moon if we if we if we de if we dig deep into the sciences of the planet Earth, the moon was at one time a part of the planet Earth. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And yes. due to the big what they could what many consider the Big Bang theory, the moon was separated from the Earth. But this is all spiritual prophecy. So basically, Absolutely. the sun, the moon does not have light of its own. It it shines the light from the sun. I'm sitting here telling you there is times where i look up like people don't even know now 
just what you explained, how gravitational pull and the moon, the sun is energy that, that was created. You understand what I'm saying? And and none of these things, the ocean, the the sun, the moon, we could not exist without these things. That people wake up every day and they expect the sun to shine, they get pissed when it rains, they get met, you know, and it's just like there's no gratitude for the moment. There's no gratitude for life how precious it is you understand what i'm saying and being able to sit and t- like right now i could have been a thousand places but the whole thing is in the morning time is very important for me i am only dedicated to things that have to do with myself self-preservation i don't even go on social media i specifically only went on social media to contact you otherwise i don't bombard myself with people that want to speak with me because it's about intention i'm setting my morning I wait for the sun. The sun gives me energy. It gives me excitement. Excitement for the things that have not happened yet. That's what people have an issue with doing. They have an issue with being excited about things without having instant gratification. Yo, check how deep this is, right? Being that you're talking yeah. about the sun. Check how deep this shit is. Yeah. Now, we know about the, the term, there is nothing new under the sun, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's just get this understood. Um, they said the Egyptians worshipped the sun The real reason yeah. why the Egyptians Was into the sun is because they knew and understand That the human spirit was made Of fire atoms yeah. The human spirit is made Of fire atoms When you die, when, you're, when you leave this physical car That you're in Your soul is going to return back to the source Of those fire atoms And the source of those fire atoms is the sun yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Our souls never go in any, yeah. any star that we can see with our physical eye is at least five times bigger than our sun. You understand? So yes. people don't think that these other giant suns out there have an effect on the world. But this is what oh, yeah. astrology is about. Astrology yes. is about the gravitational pull and power that these other suns that our stars have and then the, how it gets even deeper is that when you look at a star that star you're not seeing the actual star you're seeing the light of that star that yeah. is light years away therefore the light in that star is literally the past the present and the future in one because you're seeing a light that has been shining for millions of years you're seeing a light that will continue to shine and you're seeing the current light of it so you're really absorbing the past present and future so when we even speak about time travel what they're really dealing with is the science of manipulating the energy that comes from stars that have been here for millions and millions of years and the poor part of the planet Earth that spoke about in the 5% lessons, when people get confused on that, that degree, when they say, well, why do they call America the poor part of the planet Earth? America was called the poor part of the planet Earth because of the amount of sunlight it receives. Yes. Africa receives a level of sunlight that you literally could reach a spiritual, uh, a spiritual evolution through that sunlight being Absolutely. up up at the top of the equator like that us brown people we're the only that don't embrace africa <laughs> i mean there's a whole section of south africa where there is more european people than there is africans see they they understand this is the whole thing i i was trying to explain this to a friend of mine as well um we've also been manipulated to not like the things that make us powerful just think about that we don't like to be in the sun, you know what I'm saying? We'd be like, oh, we're sweating, that shit's hot, you know what I'm saying? Just in, in, and I would say, I want to say hip hop culture because hip hop culture seems to be such a big um, influence on brown people, even though it's just a musical culture. Now, a musical culture has taken over our entire being because that's the only outlet that we've been able to have. That look like you that actually listen to high vibrational African music because that I'm the Afro beats, the African dialogue, that's the only music that I listen to because it keeps me in a high vibration. You understand what I'm saying? So the 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 Europeans they they listen to our music. They go on vacation, they go straight to the islands, they go straight to our continent. 
they because they know the, about charging. They want to stay in the sun as much as possible, but they can't even survive in the sun. They're doing everything they can to get to get burnt. You understand what I'm saying? Because they know what comes from it. The ocean. We don't go out into the ocean by boats and go sailing. They don't. Even, do you realize that there's areas out there? I'm talking about longitude, latitude. You go to these areas and you are in the like most women don't even want to get in the damn ocean when we get there because we don't want to get our damn hair wet. Your phone was breaking up for a second. You said it's longitude and latitude that if you go in the ocean, what? Yeah, certain places you go in the ocean. That's why, you know, the Europeans, they know because they've tapped into certain things. You take these boats, you go out sailing, you go to certain areas. And yet you can tap into the supernatural powers of the ocean. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? They're, they're, it's so many magical things in the ocean. They're finding aquatic people down all the way down 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 they're finding with pictures things that have human teeth thousands and thousands of feet underneath the ocean the stuff that's unexplainable i was just researching yesterday that we're not even allowed to go to antarctica Wait, we're not allowed to try to go to antarctica if you want to or the north pole or the south pole you can't go because it's it's an underworld that's the, the that's a whole nother conversation we're not even gonna get in we've been we've been informed that you know, some believe there's civ there are civilizations in the middle of the earth. Yeah, there is. There, there is. There is a whole nother realm that we're not able to get to because they're scientists. I was studying Antarctica. The only thing that is allowed, um, scientists. There's a team of scientists out there. You know, they they study stuff. They, that's where that's where they get all of the um, the weather stuff from. You know what I'm saying? But there's secrets. There. I was just studying, there was Dr. Marx, he got he got poisoned and murdered out because he had found information out and he was gonna expose stuff. But see, this is government cover-up cover stuff, that, stuff that we don't even know about because we too busy paying attention to love and hip-hop and all that cute stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's stuff going on around us that we definitely need to understand and that we need to know about. And the ocean, the sun, the moon, wind even even the trees that we have right here all of this stuff is energy it has been here it is going to be here and these are things we're supposed to resonate with just like us you know brown people we don't go camping we don't go out into the woods we don't oh i'm going out there that's some white people shit that 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 we've been programmed to think that do you understand what is out in the woods the energy that is there because you because you're around nature and that's grounding you're around trees that's breaking up uh like Palo Santo, Palo Santo, that, that wood, that piece of wood that everybody burns, they don't know what the hell they burn. You understand what I'm saying? Um, bay leaves, you can manifest stuff with bay leaves, cloves, um, cinnamon sticks. All of these things are natural herbs that come from <laughs> the earth. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah, you can use these, tap into these things, get a, get a whole slew of herbs, keep them in your home, eat with them, cook with them. These are all things that will help you manifest the life that you want. I can explain each herb and, and all of that stuff. I, you know, when people see me on YouTube or, you know, link, whatever, they can find out all types of information. Because I've studied all of this stuff. That's like that I, book, The Celestine Prophecy. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's a book called The Celestine Prophecy. Really, is the, the Celestine Prophecy. But it's, they're talking they, about all things celestial, right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's by a dude named James Redfield. But basically, uh -huh. that book is a book about, you know, energy. It's just a book about energy. And it's a fictional book, but it's based on, like, some real deep understandings of of the mind, energy, the human spirit, and all of that. But in that yeah. book, you know, they had to travel to the virgin rainforest in Brazil to, to um, or it was either in Brazil or Colombia, virgin rainforests to tap into the next level of energy. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yes. Yeah. Because and it was untampered with by man. So everything that was there was no trees cut down. It was no civilizations. It was nothing but virgin rainforest. And the energy levels in that forest was so crazy that when they went there to meditate, they reached the next level of, of, of meditation. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. The guy that I studied, Master Akashi, he went all the way out to the, the Himalayan mountains. That's where he got his training at. And you know, it's, it's beautiful out there. The the waterfalls, the waterfalls. That's energy. That's natural water. The water that I drink comes from the Fiji Islands. The Fiji water people say, "Oh, Fiji water, it tastes just like tap water." You a damn lie, love. 
You just don't know the difference. Nah. <laughs> I fucks with Fiji water. That shit is is neutral. You got some it waters that's alkaline. No aftertaste at all. Yeah, it that shit no is smell, it's volcanic. It's, it's volcanic clean. water. It's yes, volcanic it's water. And it comes from the the Fiji mountains, and it runs over rocks, and it doesn't. And people go out there and they grab that water up. They do nothing to it. It you don't have to do it. It's water. It's naturally cleansed. There's no pollution. The things that we have going on there in the Himalayan mountains, they don't have the cars running back and forth and all this stuff and, and, and electromagnetic devices. I have crystals that protect us from electromagnetic devices because energy comes from that we're on the phone right now. The laptops, mm -hmm. all of this stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So Wi-Fi, all of that shit. Yeah, all of that shit is affecting us. In the mountains and in the woods and it's just nature and it's just sounds of water, it's sounds of animals. It's, it's it's grounding you have uh, grass or, or just trees and, and beautiful sounds clean ass air I'm talking about that air honey I wish I could bottle up and sell that damn air when people do time in prison right when you come home they always say oh you look younger you look younger um you, you don't look your age when after anybody yeah. who did some real prison time they don't look their age and the reason why is you were up there breathing fresh ass air you was mm. going to sleep at a decent time every night yep. and your body was getting the healing sleep that it needs to regenerate its cells and stuff yep. like that you breathing in that good ass air all of that shit keeps you young when you in this city with all of this pollution and smog and stress and a million people mm -hmm. Three cars Changes all over the place. Every corner, liquor store, everywhere, all of that. That yeah. shit ages you, bro. That shit, that shit ages you beyond your years. Absolutely, I'm a firm believer in that. I'm about to be 39 in January, and people are still trying to figure out why I am able. My skin, like if you see me in person, I, I look even younger than whatever the, the photos that you see. Like my skin is clear as hell. Like no blemishes. I don't have bumps. I don't wear makeup on. I don't wear foundation or none of that. The only thing you see me with is lashes and lip gloss, honey. Those are the only two things I wear. I don't like makeup. I don't like, I used to be a runway model. And I, I used to have to wear makeup doing photo shoots. I was a Budweiser girl, all of this other stuff. So it was just like, when I got to be free, I didn't want to wear no makeup. So I just don't wear makeup. But I mean, if somebody want to do my little eyelids or whatever, that's fine. But oh no, I drink alkaline water. It's a lot of stuff that I don't do. So you understand what I'm saying? So I don't have to live by a diet. And I don't have to have rules and regulations as far as because a lot of diets don't even work. You have to have self-control. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? In order, to, in order to conquer anything, you have to have self-control and you have to be motivated to do it. So I more or less, yeah, I keep myself young because I am very militant with myself, almost like how they are in the military and in when you go to prison. I'm very militant with myself. There's hella places that I'm just never gonna go. When you was locked it's, up, when you was locked up, you was on some trying to eat strict and shit like that? When I was locked up, I ate mainly, I did not eat at mess all the time because some of the times I didn't even know what the fuck it was. But I, I know that it's soy or whatever, it's able to be eaten, but I'm looking at this and you know, the visualization of it all, I'm like, bro, oh, I am <laughs> not eating this. So. I loved pizza day, the little circle pizzas. Anybody know about them circle pizzas? Shit got hectic on them days because they was ready to fight over a circle pizza. <laughs> Period. <laughs> the little bitch walk by, she got two or three pizzas. So you got one. That's a whole problem. So, yeah, I people on chicken day, people were really like hyped for when you get that little, little ass chicken quarter. Mm hmm. Yeah. And when um, I used to eat chicken, I used to be looking forward to that motherfucking chicken quarter. With some, yeah, with, I some, know, right? <laughs> with that good mashed potatoes and all of that, Yo, I was fucking that up. Then you make everything into a fucking sandwich. That's what I had to do to survive, bro. I was like, as long as I got bread, bro, I was good. Because <laughs> I could put everything. Uh, me, I'm taking that chicken and the mashed potato, putting it on the bread, and I'm like, dog better. <laughs> That's just how I'm fucking it up. Because I don't know what they got. This little SpongeBob patty. When you get the full Robinson, the bitch was still trying to figure out what SpongeBob patty that was. What you mean? What's that SpongeBob patty? What's that? Oh, oh you talking about? God. They used to call. They had a, something that they gave up uh, where you was at that they called that. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I swear <laughs> to God, let me tell you something. Crab it's patty? You talking about a crab patty? No, it's supposed to be a Salisbury steak. It's supposed to be a piece of Salisbury <laughs> steak. 
we let's just be clear. Okay, <laughs> this is not no Salisbury nor no steak, sir. Okay, <laughs> it is a it's a pit. we call it SpongeBob. That's all I can figure it out, and I didn't start that. That was handed down to me from previous Bo Robinson graduates. Like, <laughs> oh, this is this is this is that's where Glizzy came from. Glizzy came from jail. Let's just be clear. Okay, let's give the homies they they rightful. You know, props, because that's where Glizzy came from. That's the first time I ever heard Glizzy. But that big ass um, sausage school thing they used to give us. <laughs> so people be eating that that sponge that SpongeBob patty, or they don't be fucking. Man, with if it. you know what you know, you better put that shit between some bread. And if you can get a ketchup packet, you lit. Fuck you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's memory lane for real. Like SpongeBob. Yeah, I don't even know what ingredient that was. It was some type of soy piece of square or something. They was telling people that it was vegetarian? They was telling people it was soy. All the word I kept hearing when I was locked up was soy. That's yeah, what I, I remember when soy came into the pen, in the penitentiary when I was like yeah. on my last year going home. They ain't know what the fuck to do with that soy. They, was, they wasn't was seasoning that shit. They was giving us, they was talking about vegetarian chili. And I promise you, they was just giving grinded up pieces of soy chunk, the hard soy chunks they sell in the pack, mm, mm-hmm. grinded up pieces of soy chunk with straight red tomato sauce out the can. No that seasoning, no nothing. Tragic. <laughs> that nothing. Tragic. Believe me, I know I have eaten it. I know. But the thing is, I made the sure I was lucky that I have, you know, commissary. Some people didn't have commissary, they didn't have the amount, whatever. But as much as I could eat tuna packets, me and them tuna packets, had a real good what you mean? They sold them little slim foil, um, aluminum foil tuna packets. Yeah, you need about five of them bitches to make a sandwich. But if you, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, get the little mayo, when you come, a little mustard. You, you want to get fancy? That's fine. Some motherfuckers couldn't afford the condiments. You know how it go, <laughs> bitch. I bring the tuna, you bring the mayo in the cup. We can share a sandwich. What the fuck are you talking? About? Niggas know how to gel when they in there, but as a free woman. I don't want to be eating that shit. So I'm purging SpongeBob's and Glizzies and all that shit. Hold on, what's Gliz? What they? What do they call Glizzies in there? <laughs> Are you talking about? You talking about the dildo joints? No, no, I ain't talking about the dildo. I'm talking about the fucking hot dog donkey dicks. <laughs> Are they was calling the hot dogs Glizzies? Yes, that's what the first. That's why when I heard Glizzy out here, I was like, "Yo, I didn't even <laughs> know that people that never been to jail knew what a Glizzy was." <laughs> like the fuck? Niggas first talking time about I heard the Glizzy Frank was in prison. Up when they was talking, they was either calling them donkey dicks or Glizzies. Wow, them shits, them shits is mad brolic or something. Yo, it's the quarter pounder, bro. <laughs> it's the quarter pounder. Hold on. So what you said? So on a certain day, they just gave out. Big brolic ass hot dogs. Yo, super sized glizzy. I swear to God, <laughs> craziness. And I really, I only saw it like once when I was, once or twice when I was in prison. But when I went to Bo Robinson, Bo Robinson, they heavy on the glizzy type. Heavy on the glizzies. I said, oh, y'all play games. What is this shit? And then it was just like, all right. Then they got the vending machines in there where you could buy the little sandwich. Anybody that's been to Bo, they know about the vending machines. Save niggas lives. Buy you a chicken sandwich. A little burger in there, whatever the case may be. Did they have the little white? I don't think they had white castles. I'm trying to remember what type of burgers they was in there because I wasn't even eating them shits because I don't eat beef, so I was eating the chicken sandwich. But yeah, man, that food that they give you in jail, it's still better than the shit that you people are eating out here. It's like on the, I swear, I swear for crackers and cheese, these people out here have no limitation, so they just eat anything. You understand what I'm saying now? It's crazy uh, when you're locked up. It's mad ingredients that you that they are not allowed to distribute. Like you can't get pork in jail, which I think is one of the best rules they've ever made. You can't. <laughs> yes, you can't get pork. Yeah. What you mean in a package or in the mess hall? They don't serve shit. pork in the mess hall. They were serving that shit in New York. Oh no no no! Not in the state of New York. I don't know what they do up top. But when them, if you come out here and you get that good old bologna sandwich, that bologna is turkey. Or that bologna is, is chicken, <laughs> chicken, chicken bologna, bologna or whatever. Chicken bologna or some shit. It is not no pork. They are not allowed in the schools out here. 
that you can't serve pork at because the Muslim count is, is super too high. Especially in the penitentiary. They don't they don't even have time to separate all that. They probably do that shit in PA too, because I know it's crazy Muslims in PA. Oh yeah, if that child they probably have a whole riot, you try to bring some <laughs> <laughs> Oh, them Aki's is gonna roll on your ass as you bring some pork in there. Yeah, cause they play. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely, um, I don't know if they still doing the soy or whatever. I, I hope, I hope they upgraded from soy because, I mean, that taste and that texture, I just am not here. <laughs> I really am not, I'm just not here. I don't, I don't Listen, care what you say. I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian and like, I eat, I, I eat the right shit. Like, a lot of times these dudes, like, you see how tofu get a bad rep? Like, a lot of dudes, they really don't know how to prepare these things. And when they learn, yeah, because the texture of tofu, it's very mushy. Le- yeah, but if you know how to, if you know how to cook it like the way I cook it, I, I can make that shit. taste. I can make that shit the exact texture of chicken. You understand what I'm saying? It's just you know, it's different tofu's. You got firm, extra firm, then you got extra soft. The extra soft shit, you don't want to use that to try. That's what people don't know. Like a restaurant, even a restaurant, they'll say, "Oh, we got veggie tofu, we got tofu chicken." And they'll use the soft tofu, and that shit comes out disgusting. You got to use the yeah. firm tofu. It's just the levels of water, because tofu ain't shit but a soybean that has been saturated in water till it fluffed out. Oh, okay. You understand what I'm saying? That's all that shit is. And trust me, if I let you taste some tofu that I be fucking with, you'll be like, oh, shit. Now, this is I'm how you prepare I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I want to taste it because, you know, I want to be vegan or at least vegetarian you know very very soon i already have not had beef or pork in over 22 years so any type of red meat i don't eat red meat at all i just stopped eating chicken two months ago just because of the research that i've done and it's just like as soon as i see chicken i smell it it smells delicious i'm not even gonna lie to you this is the whole thing but the once i've gotten certain information and and the type of thinker i am once i know something i know and i just fuck it it just fucks me done eating chicken and i see all the bones sit there the realization yes yeah, like, at, at the end of the day you eating a dead bird carcass you understand Bro, what i'm, I'm saying here telling you so i was just <laughs> on live yesterday talking about how i stopped eating chicken i bit into a the, the last straw that broke the camel's back I, I i go i bought some fried chicken from a spot in the lower east side and mm-hmm. they deep fried it and it must have been frozen when they deep fried it and raw and it was cooked on the outside, but the inside, I bit into it. It was ice cold and bloody. Oh my God. Mad I blood. I lost it. <laughs> I said, literally, I will never eat chicken again. Mm-hmm. Just, Everybody has, just from that. has that one instance that just fucking does it. Like, okay, that's so rizzy. I'm, I, it's a heavy on the nut. What I found out that was interesting is like organic, real organic non like antibiotic free type chickens um white meat chicken is actually alkaline yeah the white meat the breast is the safest thing for you to if you are going to eat chicken you are supposed to be uh yeah chicken that is not by a bone or by um tendons and all because all that stuff inside a leg when you eat the chicken leg and the tendon popping out. When I was a kid, my aunt tried to make me eat a chicken leg, and I told her that I don't eat chicken legs because of that little rubber piece that's in the chicken leg. It's like yeah. a little yellow rubber piece. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's I don't. Because it, it was a leg that walked oh one time. Oh my god! My aunt tried to make me eat that shit, and I threw up all over her. And, and she, it was a lesson learned. Do not try to force somebody to eat something that they don't want to eat. Yeah, like what the hell? That I shit mean, was chicken disgusting. legs. Chicken legs is probably by far the cheapest. No thighs. It chicken thighs. Nah, I think, if you think about it, the yeah. cheaper it is, the more fatty it is, the harder it is to clean, the more nasty stuff. Like, yeah, dark meat that. chicken is acidic. Dark meat chicken is acidic, and white meat chicken is is alkaline. So it's like they're gonna sell you that acidic, unhealthy ass dark meat chicken. At a cheap price. Chicken wing is the leanest you're gonna get of a dark meat. If you are gonna eat a dark meat, the, your best bet is to go with a chicken wing because that has the least amount of, of whatever that gook is, that that clear stuff that you gotta rip off of them thighs and all of that fatty <laughs> part. I mean, it's a lot, but to tell you the truth, that's what people mainly use to make curry chicken, like and 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 and, and jerk and shit, like. Jerk yeah. is mainly the, the leg quarters. Yeah, it's yeah. dark meat. Every, it's dark meat. Yeah. 
I mean, shit, ain't nobody. I don't know because if I go to Juve, I'm eating a piece of chicken. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Let's <laughs> <laughs> be clear. Because I know about that little jerk shack that's over there. It's somebody cooking outside somewhere in Brooklyn. I don't even remember where I was, but I was out there for three days fucking with Brooklyn and Juve. Somebody was just, it just, the smell was intoxicating. They were underneath this tent and just cooking. I'm like, ooh. I'm now, if I run into that, I, I'm gonna have to eat it. I'm sorry. Well, if but you anyway. come, if you come to, if you you couldn't live in a uh, Flatbush, you couldn't live in Crown Heights, you couldn't live in um, Uptown in the Bronx on White Plains Road because you gonna see that curry chicken everywhere you go, mm, every and two blocks. Spanish spots don't do me like that. Oh, oh, oh no, don't do me like that. I done had the bang <laughs> on my wall. The motherfucking bodegas. Oh, see, that's the one thing. See, I live in the suburb, and it's just like I love living. What in Spanish the food you talking about? You talking about the like regular Spanish restaurants? I'm That's talking it. about, it seems like it's just stores to y'all because it's just so accessible. I walk in the store, bro, the corner store. My my son, my, my daughter's father is from um, Hempstead, Roosevelt area, Freeport. Yeah. And you go inside of a store like you about to go buy some um, some blunts or something and they got a whole slew of Spanish food. Right? <laughs> yeah, they be and having them little. look good. And I'm like, I'm not talking about they just got like two or three trays or some shit look like it been there all day. No, mommy back there. With the fatty, okay? She's making stuff. Poppy out, you know, he talking shit, serving. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, wow. This chicken looks better, way better than I can cook. <laughs> you gotta come and to I'm Dykeman. You. you gotta come, you gotta taste, you gotta come to one of the Spanish restaurants in Dykeman that they world renowned for their rotisserie chicken and they come, oh it come with some garlic sauce. Are you gonna show me? I need someone to show me these things. Bro, they got this garlic sauce that I don't eat chicken anymore. But when I did eat chicken, it was it was it was a serious problem. Like the rotisserie chicken, they come with some garlic sauce that you pour over the rotis rotisserie chicken. After. Oh, oh man, hey, they That's, lit. that shit is different. Well, they got, well, I have my, what I need now because I have a love for salmon. Me and salmon are in a whole relationship. Uh, you know, I salmon, salmon like is four some, times a week. You know, salmon. You know, I was I was reading some shit and it said that. When they did a study on the Eskimos, people that was like indigenous people of, of Alaska, where basically their diet was like 80% salmon. Yeah. They were the they had the lowest rate of heart disease out of any race of people in history. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because and it is that, so good for your hair and your skin. Yeah, I don't eat eyes. fish, but I, I, I miss out. salmon. I'm going to keep it real. I miss salmon. I don't eat fish, but sometimes I say, should I be eating fish for the pro, for the nutrients and the proteins that's in it? Yeah, I don't know. That's one thing that I had a conversation with someone about. I said, I believe that I could just eat salmon, and, and that would be the only um, source, like fish that I wouldn't have to eat anything else. I could give up shrimp, I could give up, all, but if I could only just eat salmon and have all of those wonderful kale and all that side stuff, oh yeah, I could rock out with, with salmon for the rest of my life. Let's be clear. I really, really could commit to that. And because uh, the amino and, and the skin, people snatch the skin off and it's just like, that's the worst thing you could do because a lot, I would say, you snatching off that skin just took half of the nutrients away from the salmon. You don't gotta eat it, but just cook your salmon with it at least. You understand what I'm saying? So that good juju can get inside of that piece of salmon. Me, I eat. I, I pan sear salmon and I bake it too. Pan sear is the best. You put the skin down, get that shit nice and crunchy, and then flip it over and, and let it cook the rest of the way. Oh yeah. yeah it's man. super delicious. And I, I've grown to like, um, my friend took me to this sushi spot and I had uh, some type of spicy, Something, the sushi was warm and everything. I said, whoa, I didn't even know y'all was coming like yeah, this. Yeah, I'd be murdering, I'd be murdering sushi, man. Sometimes I just go on a binge where I'm just eating sushi every day for like a week. <laughs>